This is the Infinite Podcast with me, Ulf Tender Flitzy, and this is the spirit of the holidays. So, from our wake up show, a uh, live transmission on Facebook, I talk about the holiday spirits and sort of getting into that. How do you actually get into the spirit of the holidays? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a good one, and enjoy. Well, deck the halls with hello, good morning, and top of the deck to you all. So, I'm all alone here in the, well, part of the house of where, uh, where uh, my office and uh, I'm Rabbis out on adventures and I'm, uh, this, this is not your type of copy type of wake up show. This is, uh, Something way more profound than that, and this is uh it's actually water because I don't even drink coffee um trying to get you all in the um, in the holiday spirits uh feels uh feels feels like such such a joy for me to be able to to uh to share that joy uh and with no further ado, I think we're just gonna get things started with the uh, with the good old intro. So, I think like typically to kick things off, I want to just quickly mention our Patreon.com slash The Wake Up Show, where you can support the show uh, by giving uh, um, financial support for us to be able to do this better, more, and greater, and, well, just make it the greatest show of all time. Wouldn't you want to see that? That's that sounds 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 so great. Uh, I I want to do this because this is what I came here for, um, to share the joy. Look, I put on me Christmas hats. Uh, it's an interesting tradition, but then again, I live in Norway and we wear wear beanies all the time because it's cold. Um, okay, holiday spirits. So I'd taken the liberty of uh, of uh, grabbing some text from the uh, interweb, and the word holiday comes from the Old English word halidag, which sounds like a Norwegian word, because that's what it is. It came from the same thing. So it's, oh, the word originally refers only to special religious days. Holy days. Now in... Uh, uh, in modern use, it means only special days of rest and relaxation, as opposed to normal days away from work or school. Okay. So a holiday was originally a holy day, so that was quite, quite a special day. And spirit comes from the Latin word for breath. And like breath, spirit is considered a fundamental part of being alive. Some people think of the spirit as a presence that's separate from the body, which is why spirit is another word for ghost. 
we also use spirit to mean the general general mood or intent, like when you tell your former enemy, I approach you in the spirit of kindness. Ah. So, the holiday spirit is something, well, it seems uh, uh, fairly profound and, and deep and holy. And uh, so, so now this particular holiday goes under the name of Christmas or Yule or I don't know, maybe Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. I, that, that is outside my field of expertise. Um, but uh, then again, don't have to be an expert in everything, do you? That's crazy. How, how do we, how do we in the Western world tend to get into the spirit of the holidays? So we, 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 we stress. We, we, um, we sort of uh, uh, start early December by. Are sort of preparing and planning and uh, stressing out for everything to be ready for the 24th of December, which is sort of when Christmas officially kicks off. And then there's a week of massive relaxation ended off with the new year before we start off in 2020, which is next year. It's cool. It's interesting. It's fun, uh, but so all that time we typically spend just being super stressed, like trying desperately to make our lives the the tranquil and and relaxing place that we think it should be, so that we can uh, deserve our holiday breaks. Hmm, something's off here, right? So. We're spending all this energy on trying to make, like the the holiday special, while at the same time I do believe we have established that the journey is part of the experience. So, wouldn't you be better off not stressing your brains out preparing for this special occasion, this holidays, holidays, holidays? getting into the holiday spirit. Ah. I do like the fact that spirit is another word for breath. Because I have experienced personally that remembering your breath seems to be one of the finest tricks to finding that inner peace and quiet that you actually need to truly appreciate the situation you find yourself in, whether it being uh, in line at the supermarket buying all these insane amounts of food that you need to make the perfect Christmas dinner or arguing with other parents at the toy store about some present which there are too few of and you need one to make your children happy because children are only happy if you give them presents. That's a fact, right? Because to get children in the holiday spirit, you most certainly have to put some money on the table and, and give them stuff because that's that's the prime value of things, right? The stuffiness of stuff. <sighs> I think it's it's about time we we start redefining this Christmas thing because well, for one thing, Christmas is is all about uh, was about love. It's about care and hope. And and like, wh- where do these concepts come from? Because I guess the hope comes from the fact that uh, we just recently had the winter's sol side sol that that word doesn't roll well off my tongue at all. Um, well. The Earth's orbit around the Sun is like tilted somewhat, right? And and now we've come to this point of the year where uh, this tilt will make the Sun's rise and fall on the 
northern hemisphere uh, shift. So our days will now become longer and we will have more sun, um, which is pretty neat. And so the, the Earth has been doing this for like millions of years. And uh, when humans came along, we started making like a tradition of celebrating this very day. Uh, with the hope of a new year, of a year that would uh, uh, give us, uh, well, new and uh, glorious adventures, I don't know. And, uh, well, maybe for something better, is that hope? Hope is for something better, not for something worse. Hope for something more, maybe? Maybe that would be more, uh, more precise. And and so, so, what what are our hopes for the future? Like, like if we read the news currently, it seems like we're doomed, right? Because the the um, climate is screwed, and and we're the culprit, and well, everything's bad. So things must only get worse. Really? Well, here's the interesting thing, right? Is that that's sort of up to us, what we make of it. And like we just had the autumn, which is sort of like death. So I think we all felt that, right? Where we sort of just see the uh, the seasons shifting and, and then we go into the darkness. So we're in the heart of darkness, right? Right about now and... Uh, what we desperately need is light. Now, who can provide this light? Obviously, the sun can provide light, but who shines the sun? And uh, well, we, that's you. So, you're the light. So, it's it's time to to get out there and uh, and shine and and uh, share the joy. Uh, and do we best do that by stressing around and trying to make this particular holiday into some sort of mirror image of an idea of what Christmas is all about. And I do think we've gotten something right. It's, it's sort of about abundance, right? But we've taken it literally. Like, well, we need to have too much food. We need to have too many presents. We need to have too much of everything. But it's <clears throat> abundance on on more a spiritual level which is more of a well going back to the breath it's 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 more aligning with yourself and and relaxing and not doing but being and uh well it's kind of hard to remember at, at times because we so desperately want to portray ourselves as, as uh, successful and happy to our others, people around us, our family especially. And that sort of brings us to the subject of family. And the holidays seems to be the time when we spend the most with our families. Like if we're uh, we if we haven't started our own family, typically around Christmas we'll go back to our parents, maybe our um, other relatives, and 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 spend time with them. And uh, now that might be kind of stressful, right? Because uh, well, you you left the village for a reason, and now you have to go back. Ah, that's rough. From one perspective, it all might also be a gift. And and that will always be, well, in your power to to interpret any way you feel like. Like, do you want this to be the good news or the bad news? Do you want this to be a disaster or do you want this to be a joy? We seem to be constantly forgetting why we are here. And it seems to me that the holidays is a perfect place, is a placeholder for reminding us of our purpose. 
and 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 what is our purpose it's it's just uh, eating good food and and ha- having physical objects uh, thrown at us uh, to make ourselves happy is is that why we're here really like honestly that's that's what we came for we came for the new iphone that's that's it or the Waldorf salad. I really like the Waldorf salad. I have to confess, that's my, it's my favorite holiday dish. It's like the perfect blend of uh, a dessert and 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 sort of like a dinner. I got the salty and the sweet. Goes well with everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the the Waldorf salad on the on the good list this year. That's for sure. I, w- I watched this. Uh, I watched this film, Elf, with Will Ferrell. It's a uh, it's a comedic film about this uh, guy who thinks he's an elf, even though he's a human. Because, f- well, <sighs> mistakes were made, and and uh, and uh, and then he finds out he has a human father, and he wants to go visit him. But his father only he 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 only went, wants to make money, and he only wants to. <sighs> pursue his work but the elf he only wants to 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 share the joy and have fun and why why is it so hard for us to to be the elf like for me for instance my name is ulf it's so close to elf it's insane i just need to replace one letter and i'm all into the elfhood but uh, by the by the end of the film um I think what I really like was that the Santa sleigh in this film can only fly if people believe in Santa. And a uh, long time ago in the narrative of the film, they've um, realized that people don't believe in Santa enough for the sled to fly, so they've installed like a jet engine on the sled so that it can fly. But... Well, what if what if the what if the jet engine of your life fails and you just have to believe? And and then I think there's another interesting aspect which they do so well in the film is because well, how do you make people believe in Santa? Or how do you help people believe in Santa? Do you show him on the twelve o'clock news like this? Here's Santa. Look at Santa. This is Santa. Or is it like the power of, of belief, faith? Like you just got to believe that he's there, that you just got to believe that this place is good and it becomes good. And then you're starting, where's the proof? Where's the proof that this place is good? And I do have to tell you that that Christmas present is hidden deep inside of you. Well, that's neat, right? You're walking around with Christmas inside of you all, all the time. That's, that's pretty neat. You have this. You have this gift. Now, the gift is the gift of love. Now, the love is not a physical, measurable entity, is it? It's more fluffy than that, which I think is pretty cool. Now. What happens if we this Christmas give love to one another? And now here's the, I think, exciting part is that love is sort of tricky in a way because if you walk around expecting love, there seems to be this lack. Like there's not enough love to go around. Like, I'm, I'm expecting my parents to love me, but maybe they used up their love on my siblings or on someone else, uh, on their favorite TV show or whatever. And, and it's sort of like, well, it's not about wanting, it's about giving. And, and I do believe we've sort of forgotten that during this season of joy is that this joy comes from giving and doesn't have to be that 
physical in terms of it has to be a an item put in a box. Could be care, uh, empathy. It could be, and it should be love. Now, what's interesting about love is that when we open our hearts, we do tend to believe that we get vulnerable. And when we're vulnerable, we'll easily get hurt. For instance, if, uh, uh, well, I do recall as a kid that telling a girl that I fancied her was really hard because what if she didn't fancy me back? And, uh, well, my, my conclusion was that that's uh, too great a risk to take, so I'm not going to say anything. So I didn't say shit. Well, then I never never gave anything. And so why on earth would this girl ever believe that there was any love to get from this fellow over here? That would be very, that would be very brave of her, I'd say. And, uh, uh, and um, it was very... Well, I was scared, right? Because I was didn't want to be vulnerable, didn't want to let go of control. Now, later in life, I've come to realize that the exciting news that if you dare to be vulnerable, that's when you are the most powerful. And now, if we all walk around craving love from others, there's going to be a lack of love. There's, there's going to be too little of it. And then you're going to have a band like the Black Eyed Peas making a song like, where's the love? Where's the love gone? Where It's over here, over there. Who knows? Well, the love is here, bro. In your heart. And what's cool is that when you start sharing the love unconditionally, well, that's a cool word, no conditions apply, then there is this, this, this interesting thing happens. There's abundance all of a sudden because there's... This is more than enough love because you have an infinite power and capability of loving your surroundings and obviously, and most importantly, yourself. Yeah, self-love. That sounds pretty egotistical, doesn't it? But it's not. Because that's taking it literally. Because what is the self? Who is this self we're talking about all the time? Well, it's spirit, right? It's the holiday spirit. You have to get into the holiday spirit. So, in order to get into the holiday spirit, you have to acknowledge that you are holy. You are the holy space and you are here every day. So, well, might as well make the best of it, right? And your spirit, your breath. So, I do believe by closing your eyes and inhaling... And then exhaling, you have uh, connected to the Holy Spirit, to self, your higher self. And uh, you, you're all good to go. And it uh, doesn't really matter whether you remember to buy those presents for your grandma or not. Because what, what she only wants is to see you, maybe give you a hug. And maybe she will be more relaxed if she didn't think that she had to get you stuff for you to love her. Because all these conditions do apply, right? I'll love you if you give me a little something, something. Especially towards herself. If I perform, if I make this episode of The Wake Up Show really, really great, then I deserve to be loved by myself. But you know, if you deserve infinite love no matter what, because you're unforgivable and you're doing it and that's great. You're talking to yourself at 7.30 in the morning on the night before Christmas. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah. So it seems to be sort of like a game of forgetting and remembering, right? It's very Alan Watts to say, but still it does seem to hold truer than true. So every year we have this celebration, this celebration of light, 
where light has slowly been removed from our beautiful planet up here on the north side, and now it's coming back. But if you're going to walk around your entire life thinking that the sun, the sun shines you, that, that you have no part or no play in this, well, then it's going to be hard to remember that you're shining the sun, right? Feel that. It's powerful, right? Because the sun is like huge. It's like massive. It's like room for a thousand Earths, give or take, inside of the sun. So it, it's so it's so massive that you can't even comprehend it. And you're gonna... And I'm gonna compare you to that? Yes, I am. Because that's how powerful you are. And... The path is through love. It's uh, And it's not harder than you think. It's so much easier than you think because love does not come from up here, right? From the mind. Mind tries to compute what is love. Baby, don't hurt me no more. And uh, love comes from down here. So you need to sort of get out of your head and into your body and uh, and connect with the heart and uh, whoop de woo why do you know the trick is breath well it's it's so easy that even a child can do it and oh you know what children do it all the time and then they forget because we push all these presents onto them and say well this is how you're happy this is how you're content through stuff because that's how we became happy in our unhappiness, which is ironic, don't you think? <sighs> Holy days. Now, we do have something called organized religion in this world, and I think a rubber has made a very... <laughs> I have to I have to give it up uh, for Rabbe because uh, uh, he's he's been uh, uh, traveling to the west coast of Norway I think to visit his family and uh, um, well I, uh, he 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 made the clip but he had some technical difficulties but you know what he prevailed and and he delivered and I'm uh, I'm so proud of you for doing that because it's it doesn't you just have to show up and do your best and and then you're fine. And so let's let's see what Rob has been up to. I put this on because if I can't hear what he's saying, I am the ascended master, Jesus Christ. I am here on the Wake Up Show today to challenge your minds. Jason and Ulf are talking, talking, and talking. But how is all this information coming through? It is coming through channeling the, the energy that we pick up, the consciousness that we translate into words when we speak. They're all coming from somewhere. They're coming from yourself, your mind, or they're coming from an open door for higher spirits, higher consciousness that is not a part of your mental capacity. But it has to be translated through your mental capacity. So right now, Eistan has chosen to be an open door for this energy, whatever it is. But in the moment <clears throat> he's chosen to call it Jesus, you will be challenged because that was supposed to be a person who lived on earth 2,000 years ago. And that's a, that has later been written about in the Bible, this holy text that is supposed to be a, a square box of texts that is the true word of Jesus or whatever you call it. But what is Jesus? What is consciousness? Consciousness is a living thing. So being an open door must mean also that consciousness is, a, is an alive stream of something living, not a dead text in a book. The Bible has served many good purposes, but it has also learned humanity to be blinded, either blinded by swearing to the text or by denying the text. Uh, missing the whole point which is to be 
a living consciousness, an open door for a higher spirit that is acting through you. That is the true purpose of Jesus' teaching back when I was actually Jesus living on earth. And you can, you can point to all kind of facts that will deny it or that will confirm it based on your belief systems. And that, that's the whole fun of this game. Because you can't win that game. You can only, the only thing you can do is either denying consciousness or opening up for higher consciousness. So what is your choice in this uh, holiday season? What you will be looking for is what you will find. What you will deny is also what you will find in denial. You cannot choose to see through an open, uh, sorry, a, a closed door that you have yourself made up. It is time to open up the boxes and to allow your mind to shift into this receiving mode where you can allow consciousness to come through your heart and to play itself out so that you can share the heart of humanity with the people around you. Remember that Christmas is about this. It's about love. It's about coming to the heart and spending time with human beings in connection with human beings and in connection with you. Happy holiday season. Oh, will you look at that? That's nice. Ah. So then he just went on and channeled Jesus. Because, so, that's about like 2,000 years ago. I, well, I want to say like two, 2019 years ago, approximately. Because I do believe our um, calendars are sort of based on the when Christ was born or whatever um, and so there was this Jesus guy a couple thousand years ago and yeah so he was he was challenging the current held beliefs and if I recall it correctly, he was he was very um, well. He was clever in his words. Uh, at least that's what, from what I can tell through through these uh, biblical scriptures. Uh, but uh, I guess it was in Hebrew, so I wouldn't understand it at all back then. Uh, but Rabbi channeled it very nicely, and. What 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 it seems to me Jesus was here to connect us with was with our uh, our humanity, and uh, uh, well, this was uh, as far as I can tell, this is a long time ago, uh, a time when uh, people were very divided into groups. Like so, we're in this group, and that's the right group, and this is the wrong group. So. So they uh, where Jesus grew up was in the group. Uh, of Jews in in uh, in Israel, and uh, and he came and challenged their current held beliefs about God being outside of you, and about God being only for a select few, but actually everyone's invited to the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. Now that seems and probably seems very preposterous to walk around saying these things which I guess in turn will get you crucified, but then again makes you even more powerful because we just created an entire religion based upon that fact that he just came around and loved everyone. So he came and, and he, he, he came and shared the joy and, and he shared abundantly of his love for everyone. Now, he didn't seem to hold back on his love 
uh, typically for the greedy or uh, the people who were invested in in sort of like the physical as- aspects of reality and uh, he would be more caring and giving towards the, the needy and the, the people of lack uh, which I do find compelling to think about when we typically and me myself included uh, spend our holidays caring for the people in our close vicinity who have more than enough instead of using this time to actually uh, give love to people who might need it wait a minute everybody needs love yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on that but but on the stuffy side of things I think we it's it's about time we start sharing with everyone because everyone's in your at the party and invited to it's just your greater family and, and you, you sort of like do you want to just expel some of them and include some of them include all of them uh, Jesus so we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ and Christ now here, here's what I, I had like this this uh, uh well, it was like a f- like a feeling, and I really liked like this concept was that. So, Jesus is this guy, right? So he has this uh, um, epiphany that we're all one, and that uh, the kingdom of heaven, which everyone goes around talking about somewhere in the future, is right here and now. And uh, uh, well, that's pretty great. That's good news, everyone. We're here, and we are. But in order for him to sort of gain the full momentum of of um, of, of this profound insight he, he needs to gather his tribe so he has these disciples so he just walks around and it's like hey you fellas you want in on this and some people seem to be called to to to, to join his his crew his tribe and the others don't and uh, by the end of it all there there's 12 of them which I think is a nice number, right? There's, uh, and and so when he when when all four like all these forces combined, when all the twelve disciples are there, like that's the moment when Jesus can sort of get into the Christ Christ consciousness of things because you need your crew. Know what I'm saying? Like you you sort of feel all alone, but there, you're connecting to some people. I, I feel this like like along my path I meet some people and we, we, we really connect and it gives me such strength like, this lifts me up and uh, uh, and uh, I do believe that we need our we need our crew like we need our we need our peeps and and it doesn't to find out who your people are, you need to sort of get out of your head because when you, your head starts getting into to the picture, it starts being like, well, what can this person do for you? Like, can it help me mow the lawn or, or can it uh, fix my chimney or whatever? Uh, but when you go into the heart space, uh, well, you feel this, there's like this deep connection. And and with some people whom I met along the way, there's this, this connection that transcends space and time, which is love. Because love is timeless, and uh, and um, and when I when I connect with these people, I, I sort of feel like it it lifts me up. You know, my my uh, my associate Rabbe, who's not here right now because he's somewhere on the west coast, he's one of these people. Like before I met Rabbe, I was uh, I felt I felt alone on my spiritual journey and uh, didn't quite que- clearly see my path. And then uh, I met Rabbe, and 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 to through trusting uh, that he was there for me and I was there for him and 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 then so all of this all of a sudden I'm sitting here in the, in in the morning jabbering about Jesus on on the wake up show that's pretty cool didn't think that was going to happen actually used to hate Jesus that's interesting <sighs> turns out that the only thing gained from hating someone was making me more alone and more angry and upset 
and what I do find is like strange about this whole love thing is that when I was walking around hating religion, hating hating God, hating Jesus, hating the whole tr- Trinity, uh, well, how how am I able, how 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 am I going to be able to sort of find any love up in there? It's going to just be hates. And and how am I going to look to other people with with care and compassion if 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 I put on the glasses of hate? It's only going to see see the bad stuff. And yes, hey Adrian, good morning. Welcome to the wake up show. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Just- <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, my dear son. <laughs> I'll catch you later. Yeah. Will you close the door, please? Yeah. Thanks, man. And that was my uh, my dad was talking about uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, that was my astronaut son. Ah. Uh, so, giving sort of let let. Let it, oh, when you, you just have to let go of this 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 idea of hate, because it's not going to get you anywhere. That got me nowhere. Well, it got me into a state of of of, of intense suffering and pain uh, because I was so afraid. And and I I think that's um, something to to sort of live by is that what is fear and and so we walk around fear of not being loved of not being good enough of not being sort of at the party at the same time as we're holding back on loving others and obviously loving ourselves at the deepest level which is is at the at the core of it all like self self love is 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 um is pretty vital and i think that's that, that's the greatest gift you can give is 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 to love yourself because the moment you allow that to happen then you can then you can really start sharing the love and you know that's that's what the world need right now is love uh because then then through love we can actually oh well, what's the word rub what's the word it's uh surrender and and then you realize that you're 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 mighty powerful at that in that position you're not weak you're not broken you're whole and you're perfect and and uh well hate will just bounce off of you like uh ping pong balls to a drywall that's <clears throat> so we're going Oh, okay, I see Chris Rolson. I do like being a unicorn. A unicorn is sort of like a symbol of love, yeah? Hating yourself, like, that's only going to get you to one very dark place. It's called hell. Well, welcome to hell, a uh, place for, for self hate and uh, for lack. Now, what's interesting about hell is just an illusion, and and you can go to heaven whenever you feel like it if you allow it through self love and to through surrender. And and then you're all of a sudden you're there, and the things that seem so hellish are now all of a sudden quite tranquil and uh, and nice. <sighs> like if you're going. To spend Christmas with someone and and uh, you're hating yourself, and maybe you're actually believing that they hate you as well. Like, like my parents don't 
my parents don't think I'm good enough. So, so I'm going to come home for Christmas and I'm going to be sitting around and, and silently thinking that I'm not good enough. And then they, they're going to give me presents that going to sort of indicate how imperfect I am. So you, you'll actually just have the perfect hellish Christmas. Is that what Christmas is all about? Well, no, it's about giving, caring, forgiving, and sharing the joy. And now, earlier in the episode, I was talking about this movie Elf, and what I do really like was that how do you get into Christmas spirit is by singing and dancing. Huh? Because it's like when you sing and you dance, you sort of let go of... Well, you let go of this idea that you need to be something. You can just... Something special. You just have to you just have to do whatever and, and, and use your body and use your voice and... and enjoy that stuff. Um... And and that's how you actually share, because when you sing out loud, right, then people will hear it, and it'll it's actually like a, some sort of a horrible disease. It'll spread. Other people will start singing and dancing, and then you sort of, well, it's an effective way of sh- of sharing the love, which is what we're, what's what this is what this time is all about. Like so, Christmas, which is sort of like a, uh, well, it's the word Christ and the Mass, which is like a ceremony in church, is it? Um, so it's in the remembrance of this guy who walked around loving everyone, loving himself, telling everyone is invited to the party and that the kingdom of heaven is here right now. And if you can only realize that you are the sun shining, not the sun shining you, then. Uh, well, then it's just time to party, and uh, and it's the end of suffering. It's not the end of hurting yourself when you uh, hit uh, hit your thumb when you're trying to hit the nail. But it's all this safe self blame of not being enough. Well, that's it's the end of that. So it's. You know, in 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 in, the, in in situations like this, where you would typically ask, "What would Jesus do?" It's not actually the question. What would you do? And not like the up here you, but the down here you. And you all know the answer to that. You're gonna forgive. You're gonna surrender, and you're gonna love unconditionally. And that's how healing begins and works. And it's so easy. It's uh, obviously not as fun as uh, getting a new toy. Or is it? This toy. The, what was the term again? The, the, the flesh mobile? That's like, that sounds like a porno. That's, that's, no. We'll stick to that. We'll stick to that. Stick to the script. Okay, so we're at the part, I think we're at the part of the show where I should actually conjure up a quote. Because quotes, you know, are uh, uh, a way of uh, condensing truth into some, like, higher truth and and all that, and... and, uh, and it seems to be an effective way of, of, of sort of flipping switches in, in our minds into to like a better place. Um, so, so I'm going to have searched the internet far and wide. That's what I do to find a quote that seems, uh, seems perfect to get us into the holiday spirit. And I printed it out on a piece of paper. Lord behold, I have this piece of paper here. Now, are you ready? Are you ready for the Christmas quote? To meet your quota, 
I'm going to hold it up in front of you so you can actually see it yourselves. And uh, the quote goes somewhere along the lines of this. Now, if you if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. It's uh, old Santa Claus himself, Michael Jackson. Oh. Yeah, so how can we save the world and make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race? And the plants and the animals and the earth itself. Um, well, how about we start looking in the mirror and how about if that change is made through self love by loving yourself unconditionally you can actually make the world a better place now this is my from from all of me to all of you that's my gifts of love and uh, um, and the test of the fact that that's that's actually how we make the world a better place it's absurdly easy and hard at the same time because what if, what if someone doesn't like my love? What if I, I doesn't, I, I, I don't feel I deserve this love? <sighs> well, then you need to check in to the art space. You need to check out of the brain space, because the brain's gonna be saying a lot of stuff. Because the brain, you know, is a uh, terrific uh, servant, a horrible master. Because the brain is not the master, you're the master. Ascended master. <sighs> so, well, I, I'm in, I'm in way off a time of base because we're, we're not even close to the hour mark yet. I need to cook up some more stuff in the stew, stew of life. Um, okay, so Christmas is about love, is about remembering, and breath is uh, is uh, the perfect hack to, to, to get there. And uh, holidays is about family. Life is about family. Now, would it be most beneficial for you to limit it to the concept of just your closest loved ones? Or do you think you could actually have the capacity to, to broaden that a bit, like to, to extend that stuff a bit? Like, could your love include your friends? Could it include co-workers, your colleagues? Could your love actually have space for uh, your... Uh, your neighbors or uh, your small village, your town. Is, is there room in your heart for your in, entire town? Like I live in Drummond, there's like, like I don't know, 70,000 people there. Is there room in my heart for 70,000 people? Yes, there is. Because I have an infinite capability of loving my fellow humans and plants and animals. Is there room in your heart for your country. Oh yes, I love my country. I'll put flags up on my Christmas tree. Actually, I had no, no flags on the Christmas tree, but I do love everyone in this, this beautiful country where I reside. Can I... Can I love everyone on, on, this, on this planet Earth? Is there actually room in my heart? Can I, can I look upon Earth as my family? Can I look upon Earth as my tribe? Can I find that we are all each other's disciples and that we can all help each other get into that sort of, like that crisis space where we're just loving the present, loving ourselves and loving each other unconditionally. And, uh, and yes, yes, I, I, I do believe I can. Because uh, 
that's that's what I came here for. That's what I came here to do. That's my that's my that's my that's my homework assignment for this incarnation. So let's share the love, and you know, let's 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 get bigger. Can I find in my heart the space to love this entire cosmos and universe? Is there space for that? It's big, man. It's huge. But you know what? In my heart, there is there is always room. And you know what's interesting about my heart? My heart's like your heart. <sighs> so if we all walk around with these infinite love love devices in our our, our flesh mobiles, that that does seem like we're we're the solution to all the problems that we have created. And that's pretty neat. That's a gift that deserves unwrapping. Right? I was going to say something about the uh, Rabbe talked about these boxes and uh, unwrapping them. And, and you know, you're sitting, like uh, myself, I was sitting in this small box, right? It, it, like called reality and, uh, and uh, was very, um, well, set upon that the box was all that that was. And then, there is nothing outside the box. It's just me, and uh, I'm insignificant, and I'm the poor little me, and all that. And then, uh, well, I accidentally opened the box. Uh, it wasn't even Christmas, uh, and the Lord, you know what? It was just love. And uh, uh, at first, I became a bit, uh, you know, afraid because uh, who am I to deserve all this love? Uh, can I mean I, I've done. I messed up a couple of times, but uh, well, I surrendered, and uh, well, now I'm here, heaven on earth. It's pretty neat. It's a good place. <sighs> um. So, the concept of family, you can limit that how much ever you like, or you can expand it infinitely. And there are no ends to your capacity to love. And if you have, like, if you have uh, uh, any, uh, like, any doubts or whatever about, like, well, can this be true? Like, why on earth would it? Why, why on earth would this not be true? Like, why would you choose? Why would you choose lack and and uh, and and uh, suffering and hell over abundance, uh, joy and heaven? Uh, well, you need to check in, check into the heart box, see what see what's going on over there. And uh, Christer, I'm so looking forward to meeting you too. That's that's going to be. That's that's gonna that we we're gonna hang out in uh, I guess in 2020 because it's so stressful now in the end of December. So, who? But uh, yeah, take care of the family and take care of yourselves, and uh, sp spread the joy uh, through love. That's uh, that's the thing, and and also, you know, uh, if you, if you feel like help. Helping a brother out for Christmas, we have something called Patreon.com slash The Wake Up Show where you can support the show and help me and Rabbe and all our associates make this the greatest show of all time because we're here to wake everyone up. And uh, by golly, we're gonna, that's what, we, that's what we're gonna do. And it's, it's a delight. And, uh, and thank you for your for your help and and to all our patrons. Thank you so much for believing in us and 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 for your support. It really makes a difference. And uh, well, we're closing in on the end of the season. I'm, I I do believe because this is 2019, we're going to make 19 episodes. So there's going to be like a, a, a um, an episode on the day before New Year's and. Uh, do you believe we're going to have like maybe we could like 
have some questions, like questions and answers, like Q and A. Like so, if people have any questions, just feel free to post them in the in the comment section or on the on the Wake Up Show Facebook page. Um, I love you guys and get into the holiday spirit. This every day is a holiday, a holy day, and remember to breathe. And remember that this place is. Uh, I'll have to put this thing on and uh, do like uh, this. See how that works. Oh, unfuckable. That's what you are. Unfuckable, though near or far. <clears throat> like a song of love that clings to me, how the thought of lifeless things to me never before has someone been more. Unfuckable in every way, and forevermore, that's how you'll stay. That's why, darling, it's incredible that. Someone so unfuckable thinks that I am unfuckable too. And a merry Christmas to you. That's something for 2020, I guess. I could, like, I can still sing. That's cool. I'm fuckable in every way. Evermore, that's how we'll stay. That's why, people, it's incredible that someone so unfuckable thinks that I am unfuckable too. Merry Christmas, unfuckable to you.